Uh, welcome to, to another News Game Plus. I'm Dermy, and I'm here with New Game Plus executive producer Jason O'Callaghan, and we're still uh, grounded. <laughs> yes. Still, uh, uh, yeah. So it's 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 been obviously tough with everything. Like you know, both you and myself work in uh, digital fields, and so um, we've basically we've both been. I don't know. I've been, I know I've been super busy, and you've been super busy. And uh, Jack came back and has taken over as showrunner for the next uh, year of episodes. So um, cool. he's, he's, he stole our kind of Wednesday Thursday mojo. So we've been trying to figure out a way to do it. So um, yeah, as, this will be the last one today and then we'll uh, for wednesdays and then we'll shift over to a sunday monday uh timeline to kind of maximize your listening pleasure on the uh the podcasting services yeah we're trying to shuffle things around a few plans because of the uh grant being grounded uh, haven't really come to fruition yeah. yet but we're just trying to shuffle things around but anyway we'll get to that later um yeah but uh yeah with, with the lockdown actually i um i i was actually saying to my kids they're, they're lucky um it, I see a lot of people complaining about lockdown. I don't want to get into this too much, but uh, but you know, people are lucky that it's not thirty years ago lockdown. Because I'm going to tell a horror story. Because this this frightened my children. If, you, if there's any kids listening or any parents oh. young children oh. listening, put them in bed now. They don't want to hear this because this is they they uh, this is going to be traumatizing. When I was young, <laughs> start with a typical old man start. Back in back in your um, day, here we go. Ma- back in the my day, yeah. okay. Um, there's no Netflix. Uh, there was no Wi-Fi. There was no, well, barely any internet. There's no World Wide Web. Um, there was uh, there was no Xbox or PlayStation yet. And uh, if you did have a Nintendo or, or even an Atari or something back back in the old days, uh, there was one TV in the house, and your dad got to choose what you watched. <laughs> so uh, so people now are complaining about uh, lockdown. Uh, yeah, that's it. Could be a lot worse because because uh, so many kids. When I was young, being locked down meant being in a small house with uh, or normally large family at that point in time. One TV in the whole house. Do you know how one TV used to work? You're probably old enough to remember this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, see, yeah. I, I was I six o'clock when I went, news. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, no, no. Okay, six okay. o'clock news into. And, I mean, that that was always why the the Seinfeld at six thing was such a phenomena. Uh, for Channel Ten was because they did five o'clock news and then where everyone else was doing six o'clock news. So yeah, but yeah you Simpsons used to go for... at seven. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, current affair at six thirty. Uh, there was a game show. Like if you if your parents didn't yeah. like Simpsons, you had to watch uh, Sale of the Century or something at mm. seven o'clock. Uh, um, and, Family Feud uh, for a while uh, there. Yeah. With Tony Barber or something. And seven thirty, yeah, it went right. into some sort of a murder mystery or something, or some sort of drama. And then eight eight thirty, uh, your dad would switch the TV over to SBS for some boobies. So uh, and that's the other thing that's changed. Back back then, and this this is going to be frightening for older older children out there that uh, the, the, the your teens and your early twenties maybe, um, because there's no internet, there was no access to any risque material either. So uh, the only way you were going to see anything like that was if uh, one of your mates found his dad's uh, stash of magazines. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, things are very different now. I tell you what, right now, uh, people are complaining about lockdown, you're spoiled. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. the best time in history. And in fact, we're lucky that we finally got NBN too. <laughs> so, and and, and we, 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 have, we have NBN at a reasonable quality. Do you know what I mean? Like it, as much as I, I hate the path the NBN has taken, um, b- despite their bad business decisions, despite all that, like there's actually some okay, like you know the uptimes and stuff like that is finally starting to stabilize, and this is when they'll start to look at selling it to Telstra because they're fucked. But like, um, yeah, no, I, I 100% agree. Like, I mean, like I'm, I'm old enough to remember, but see, when I was a kid, uh, I used to have like a tiny little, like kind of 24 inch. CRT in my room so like I used to be able to like split off and, and go do that and stuff like that so at least I had yeah. something You're which was spoiled <laughs> yeah 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 which was which was super spoiled back in those days but like, I remember I remember at Nan's place it was yeah they'd watch they'd watch the news at five on channel 10 and then they'd oh, watch yeah, the, 10 of the early news yeah yeah, yeah. and then, they, yeah. then they'd watch channels uh, like nine news um, at six o'clock, and then they'd watch a current affair. So for that two-hour block, and then they'd be serving you dinner at four thirty, five o'clock because they're old people, and that's when they fucking eat. And that kill, yeah. they used to kill me. Like people always say, like, oh, you never have a really good bedtime. I'm like, yeah. Oh, sorry, dinner time. I'm like, yes, because dinner time was either four thirty <clears> or it was when I reheated the food after I got home from work. You know what I mean? So it was like, um, yeah, I never, mm. I never knew what a like what a decent um 
uh, oh, time was. was. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. The, the, the whole day revolved around the TV schedule, and that, that's yeah. I'm not, not exaggerating. Now, now if you, you go, oh, actually, I'm not, I'm old enough to remember when Channel Ten started. It was Channel Zero. <laughs> so, but yeah. uh, and the, the new TV station starting was a big deal. But um, yeah, the whole day revolved around TV. Now, nowadays, there's like you know 300 new channels every hour started on YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> there's always something to watch, and you can jump on your tablet or your phone and. And uh, and watch things. And you got Netflix, like I said. And you got you got uh, you got an Xbox or a PlayStation or a Switch. Don't complain, people, <laughs> because it could be worse. Yeah, this is the best time in history to be locked at home. <laughs> so it's a, it's a, yeah. well, you wouldn't want to happen back in the uh, back in the eighties and nineties. And, and, and the thing I love the most is it's like oh, all, you know, the, the the real groundswell against Dan Andrews. It's like Roy Morgan polls, so not Fairfax, which is a lie. <laughs> not not News Corp polls. Roy Morgan <clears throat> polls, actual polls. Uh, he has like a 70 odd percent approval rating and it's like yeah the 300 people who show up to the queen vic markets and terrorize people um you're not really having the impact that you thought you would were you you know and then um let's not get started on throwing a brick at edward Burke. No, actually so, uh, yeah. no wait i won't get political but i will say something because i was talking about this with my daughter because she's starting to get yeah. older now and take a real interest in stuff what you what you'll find in society and people people don't People forget this; they don't understand. This is—I'm I'm getting to the seventy percent number, right? There's yeah. like forty percent of people in society who are hard one side of yeah. politics in that particular country, and there's another forty percent that are the other side, and they're never going to change. They're like forty teams to them, right? So, yeah. and, and America's the same with the Democrats and Republicans, although they don't have to vote. There's like hundred million people that don't vote, but out of the ones that do. There's that. So you've got that bit in the middle. It's probably less than ten percent. It's probably closer to five percent who are genuinely people who make up their mind as they go. Yeah, yeah. Um, the others, the others are never going to. So they 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 support their team and every everything their team does is good and everything their team says is right and correct and the other team's evil and that's it. And it's always been like that. It, it's really obvious now because it's played up for um for clicks, right? It's the ultimate mm-hmm. clickbait. It's like it's like boy versus girl, or you know, some so one of those yeah, yeah. one of those things that an age old thing you play up. Right now it's left right, which is fake, but I won't get into that. Um but you got you got forty some percent of each side that are just not going to change. Uh, but what you so when you see when you see an election, elections are normally one like in in any two party system worldwide. We're still two, even though we've got the Greens. We're still two. Um, elections are normally one by only a couple of percent of the vote. So yeah. if you see an election won by you know fifty five to forty five, that's a really that's a smashing win, right? Um, and that's what people don't get. People kind of think, oh, I can't believe anybody would vote for such and such. Well, you know what? The, the fact is that they're just are, and, and their candidate could, could murder puppies live on TV, and yeah, they're not going to change yeah. their vote, right? They're going to hate it, but they're not going to change. So when you see a, a, a number like 70% of Victorians supporting Daniel Andrews, that, that is actually massive because that yeah. means that a lot of that hard-coded um, other side of politics it, it, it has switched over, and that's yeah. rare. Not, if, if I saw 60-40, I'd say, okay, well, that's probably all the genuine undecideds have switched. 60-40 yeah. um, is still high, but you know, you know where I'm going. Um, yeah, yeah. All, all well, the, 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 same, the same sex marriage on was 65-35, and, and that was still considered, like, yep, yeah, cool, where we're doing it, because that's that's not a 52-48 Brexit. That's a 65-35, yeah, okay. Like, there's, well, see, there's 50, more than a, 52-48 yeah. Brexit is normal, and that's why yeah. constitutional changes normally require a three, no, two-thirds. Two two-thirds majority, two-thirds yeah, two-third majority. majority, yep. Because they knew that back then, because it's always been the way. And, and people people on the internet, can they, they can be in bubbles. They can forget now that that's the way it is. You'll see people on Facebook, and they just can't understand how anybody, say, could like Trump. And you'll see an equal number of people who can't understand how anybody could like Biden. The fact is that there are there is a percentage of the population that's large who are going to no matter what, because I, I, yeah, that's I, I, their team. I would say the difference in America is that obviously they don't have mandatory voting. So like, it's that thing of like, yep, there's, I, I would say it wouldn't be 40. I'd say it's about 30, 35, right. That, that are guaranteed one way or the other. Um, but the thing is that the Americans face and, and Australians have it to a smaller extent as well is that, um, but, but we obviously have mandatory voting. So everyone has to go and vote no matter what. So as the age ratio skews, more likely you'll see it kind of creep down. So they have like, you know, liberals have to sell their message to young people, which they don't <clears> like doing. So that's why they yeah. try and sell this prosperity, you know, keep your house prices up, blah, 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 blah. Whereas in America, the Republicans will always vote. They'll always go out and vote. They'll always drag their old people out to vote. They'll always, vote, because it's not mandatory. So the Democrats, the young people, 
people assume they'll walk it in as I have, whatever, don't worry about it. Or, you know, what whatever laws are enacted meaning that, you know, these particular places, like you say, where, you know, the, the votes matter more than they would elsewhere, you know, you, you find a way to do that. I mean, it, it, you know, we still had Chisholm here. I'm in Chisholm, uh, like, electorate at the moment. And um, that was one where Gladys Liu won by a thousand votes. Now, she lied on those signs, like... um. The, the Liberals lied on those signs and made them look like AEC ones. A thousand votes aren't hard to sway. Like, you know, we, we're, yeah, we're, so much. The, the area we have is 25% Chinese as well. And the area is, I think it's like 80, 90,000 or something like that. Some some reasonably high figure of, of people. I mean, to, to argue that 1% of those people, or, you know, 2 or 3% of those people were fooled by those signs, it's not a hard bow to draw. Do you know what I mean? The biggest problem was they went after Frydenberg and Frydenberg won in basically what was a landslide um and so they had to hear both cases together and therefore they got thrown out and it's like yeah yeah, yeah. if they heard um, him individually yeah the um the point is that there's the, there's a locked in boom in fact the the yeah. elections generally uh, most of the states trump only won by like 20 or thirty thousand votes um and and in fact if you look historically in the u.s election numbers the the republican votes normally very consistent yeah um but the democrat vote goes up and down so it's so right, yeah. things about who goes uh, anyway look um we weren't going to talk too much about that but that, but it was about lockdown and, and it, 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 there you go you got a little thing about uh, uh don't die of shock if other people uh, have the opposite political view to you because you got to assume that that you know forty something percent of the people you yeah. talk to are hard coded to, and it's part of their identity. And with the way you approach them, has to be different than than yelling at them and telling them that they're stupid because they're not going to listen. No, nobody's ever nobody's ever said to somebody, "Hey, you know, oh, do you think that will you're, you're racist?" And they've gone, "Hey, you know what? I am. I, I, yeah. I'm, I'm going to change my mind." It doesn't happen. That, that's yeah. that's a fantasy. You know those those Twitter posts where people go, "I was on the bus and I said this, and this this person of color came up, and then the whole bus clapped." And yeah. that, that yeah. They're all lies, right? They don't happen in real life. Anyway, people are locked yeah. in. That was my point. And for for seventy percent approval for the lockdown, well, that is that is actually massive. That is yeah. That's where yeah. I was going. Absolutely, in, in yeah, the yeah, yeah. system that is yeah. enormous. Yeah, and that, that's um, why they're so desperate to to kind of make make a big deal of it while it's still here. Because as as lockdown starts to wean off, there's going to be less anger in the community that they can capitalize on. Do you know what I mean? So well, um, most people yeah. most people have already forgotten the bushfires. Yeah. Um, and, and then we're, we're uh, just about to get 2.0 of that. So don't, don't, <laughs> you know, I mean, it's, well, a, it's, we, a, yeah. it's a, it's like Scott, Scotty's Teflon. If there's nothing you can say about Scott Morrison, he's Teflon. But anyway, let's talk about video games. Cause this means to be a video game podcast. And, and you even know, we're not going to tangent as we do. Uh, okay. Yeah. First one. Oh, what was I going to talk about? <laughs> I've totally forgotten. There's a big, this ah, Sony. Sony is about to release pricing. And, and I, now I, they yeah, haven't confirmed got... that they're about to release pricing. They've just got okay. a big, they have to. They have to at this point. I think it's in seven hours. Yeah. <laughs> so, so Microsoft obviously had the leak. Um, so they they had the leak come out. Um, that was a like, you know, um, uh, they told the prices, told all that, and they rolled with they rolled with the punch, all that kind of stuff. One of their did you see the link from the C the one of the the VPs and was like she was very mad, like she was very very mad, and um, yeah, well look at um... yeah. That looks like we're going to do it at some point. They had to. Yeah, of course, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that's the important thing to keep in mind is that they they had to. You're right. Like, um, they had to release prices. Mm. They wanted to do it this week, I think, because they knew Sony were going to do a thing just before TGS and and fuel in a TGS because it's something that Sony's always done. Nintendo usually will do a mini partner direct for TGS, which is what they're doing. I think tomorrow or the day after, um, because TGS oh, yeah, officially mini- starts next yeah. week. Yeah, uh, all Friday. the online TGS stuff. Yeah. Um, yep. And so, um, yeah, and so it becomes that that question of, um, you know, what, um, uh, you know, what, what, where are they going to go now? Um, uh, like, are you surprised at the the Xbox prices or? No, okay, well, let's let's get into the pricing because because I've already told you I think there's some 4D chess being played. <laughs> we're back on back on on uh, other stuff, but that, no, I, I think there's some 4D chess being played. Now, what what yep. were the prices? They're like Australian the the Series X, the big box. Yeah, is seven forty nine. Um, seven forty nine Australian, yep. and the S, which is the little thing that looks like a takeaway speaker. Yeah. Very which very you... good tweet by yeah. Don, by the way, about yeah, that looks yeah. like something I'd order a fries and large burger through. That was yeah. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> $4.99. Correct. Yeah, yeah. So for four ninety nine for that one and uh seven fifty for the other one. Now it's a little bit higher than I would have thought, but Don brought up an interesting point since we're talking about him in our Discord, which was um American prices don't have tax attached and if you do six 
if you do 4.99 USD um, plus 10 percent, you get 754. So the minimum that they could have, well, you know, the the kind of you know, they obviously expect the currency to stabilize. Um, yeah. And and as a result, yeah, they're they're, they're charging 750 now. It's a bit more than still a bit more than I thought they would have gone. 499 was on the money for where I thought the S would be. It's the X that I thought would be a little bit cheaper. Um, but I mean, it, it comes in pretty. I mean, it's it's comes in pretty line price with where I thought. I don't know where your head was at with it, but it sounds about. Uh, it's yeah. a little bit more. Like I, I thought, like I thought maybe six fifty six or seven. Oh, or sorry, six forty nine and six ninety nine. Because you know, four four yeah. nine and nine nine are psychological numbers. Correct. Four ninety nine, which is not five hundred. Well, yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So, I don't know why they do that, but um, uh, but see, this is what I think. This Ford HS. And yeah. I'll tell you why is, is, is my theory is this, right? Now, Sony, <clears throat> they were playing chicken and, and all along, I think Sony was going to come in higher than the Xbox because in this console cycle, Xbox is making all the moves and Sony is reacting and they've been reacting since, since the start. So, and, and their cost of, you, you see a little while ago, the, I think Kotaku said that the cost of uh, parts in the PS5 is enormous. That probably is in the, the Xbox, but but it did it did add up to a fair bit, and and Sony's been talking up the uh, it's about the it's a new generation, yeah, you know, all that sort of typical Sony wank that they do that the, the fanboys lap up. And, um, so I reckon Sony's going to come in higher, and so yeah. the forty chess I reckon has played is Microsoft have gone high on the Series X. They they've gone a bit higher than they intended to. Sony's going to come in fifty to a hundred dollars more. Uh, US, yes. um, because they'll then they've got that that room to move. Because I'll go, ah, cool, yeah. we can do that. Our fans will buy it. We can sell it as this is a generational jump, all that other crap. Um, and then Microsoft uh, have room then to move downwards, probably around Christmas or whenever they feel like, um, yeah. which leaves Sony uh, reacting again and potentially not able to because they'll be relieved to have that little bit of a buffer, but they, yeah, won't, want, yeah. they won't want a $150 or $200 difference between the consoles. And I think that's where Microsoft's going to leave them, if not Christmas, early next year. Yeah. So my the only thing I would add to that, like I'm pretty... I'm pretty on board with most of what you're saying, is um, word has it there was a, a magic scramble on um, after um, th this leak from from Xbox. So whether they've had that, you know, they, they, I mean, you always got to assume they've got the inside line. You, you always got to assume the big tech companies know where their <clears> opponents are. I mean, they pay millions <throat> of dollars to do that kind of stuff. And as long as you don't get caught being an industrial spy, you're fine. Yep. Um, so <laughs> I, I get the feeling they knew it would be roughly that. I just don't think, I think I, I wouldn't be surprised if they were shocked as well. And I was reading an article that Luke shared in our discord from, you know, it's always one of those insider things and all of that. Like, hello, Luke. One of the Sorry? biggest fans yes. of the show. Big hello, yes. Luke. Um, that is true. Yeah, no, no, no. And, and so you put a thing in there, and um, it was it was just discussing how Sony's gone back to the drawing board on price, and I'm not convinced that drawing board is as scary as it would have been in PS4. If this had happened, and House and Leighton and all those people were still in charge, um, I'd be a bit worried if I was Spencer. But like because all the good smart people are gone, and the PS5 will inherently cost more to make because of that SSD. That SSD is going to drive up unit costs 50 bucks. You know what I mean? Like yeah. after you account for everything, after you account for all that kind of stuff, like you're not looking at a good spot for that extra storage. Um, that like I, I'm with you. I think it's going to come in like Australian dollars, eight 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 fifty minimum. Um, and that's that's potentially <clears throat> discless. Though I would say the discless might be like seven fifty or something like that. Because realistically, the difference between say the discless and the disked PlayStation is that you have um like it's the same unit otherwise like it, it it's oh, there's only one spec for PlayStation Five at the moment. There's the, the PlayStation Five is the PlayStation Five. The disc one's got like a, a pregnant tummy on it. Where the yes, disc it goes. does a little bit actually. Yeah, yeah, it, it does. Yeah. So maybe it may, maybe it spawns Vitas or something. But um, uh, the um, the the push, push. The, oh, it's a Vita. <laughs> yeah, oh god, put it back. Yeah, a reveal where's party and burn everything yeah. down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, oh, it's, it's a Vita. Light the fires. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's light the fires of Gondor. Yeah. Um, you know, he shot himself in the nuts with the uh, the reveal thing. He, he just yeah. missed his daughter's head. By the way, <laughs> talking about how he, he shot himself. In 
and they're nuts. And I thought, you almost killed your daughter. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, yeah. Uh, look, anyway, no, I, I know, I know the meme you mean, but yeah. So I, I agree with you. I, th- I think that it's going to be. Um, like I think because you know even the discless one and the disc one are technically the same spec, the the gap will only be fifty USD, like fifty maybe a hundred max USD. Because you I mean you're losing functionality technically. You know you're not gaining functionality. You're losing functionality. Whereas with the Xbox, it's clear that they want to progress. They they want to they want a step to get people who didn't buy the Xbox One X into <clears throat> The next generation, which is the 499 one, because it's like, oh, cool, it's about the same price as a Xbox One X. Um, it still plays a lot of other stuff. It'll play all of your existing Xbox games. It'll play minimum spec of all these <clears throat> next-gen games. And then when it comes to um, the Xbox Series X, that to them is that the the Xbox faithful kind of thing. And I, I think the other part as well is I just genuinely think Sony's got huge hardware shortages. Like Microsoft have come out and said, pre-order our console, blah, blah. Sony's got a lottery. It's a lottery to get it. I mean, that's some Japanese shit if I've ever heard it. Um, yeah. Because yeah. they've been reacting. And I think Microsoft yeah. has been has been controlling this release cycle. Now, I'm going to call it a release cycle because there's something you touched on there that I also want to want to raise, yeah. and that's the idea of generations. Now, now I know uh, I know Aaron particularly I saw uh, ask you on our Facebook page, um, what, are, what are the launch games? And uh, yeah. I think I think there's there's something that's changed fundamentally now, mm. um, at least with Microsoft, that I don't think a lot of people writing about these things and commenting about them or buying are aware of, and that's that... These aren't Microsoft isn't doing generations anymore any more yeah. than a new Nvidia graphics card yep. is a new generation of your PC. Yeah. And so when people say, "Oh, but what about the exclusives and what about the the launch games?" From now on, Xbox is because they've said they run everything because mm. every every peripheral, every game, and, and Microsoft or Spencer has said will run forever now on every future Xbox. They've got yeah. that. They've got that infrastructure sorted out perfectly, and then they have with the backward compatibility. So, so what you're seeing now is these aren't generations. You see them on Wikipedia. Oh, it's the eighth generation console. That's wank, right? But yeah, you know, yeah. it always was. But it's it's not generations anymore. Sony wants to say it's generations because yeah. there's that's won't what be very backward compatible. Yeah, and, and and they've they've definitely hitched their wagon to that. Like the, the, all their backwards compatibility <clears throat> stuff is scrambling. Like Microsoft, um, yeah, you know, people can say, oh, there's certain games missing and stuff like that. But but for years they've tried to find a way <clears throat> to make it palatable. That they've wanted it to be the end goal. And I think under Spencer, they're at that point where they're like, all the 360 stuff you like, all the Xbox original stuff that we have, we're not going to expand those anymore. Sorry, your Xbox One stuff, basically every game will work straight out of the box. Like we will just emulate that one to one. You don't have to worry. And I yeah. think because the hardware differences, again, it all comes down to the hardware differences. The main reason you're not going to get PS3 games on PS5, and and although you can, like, there are starting to make leaps and bounds with the PS3 emulation on PC and stuff like that, is mm. it would be nearly impossible to do it with the processes that exist on. The, uh, on like the PlayStation uh, 5, it's not going to be enough power. It's not like working out those processes. You can't brute force over that. Whereas a, a good spec PC, you can brute force through it. You know I mean? You can, you can make it so that it'll, it'll brute force through. But PS3 was such unique hardware that you just, you can't, do it like that unfortunately it's like it's how yeah, well, it works so. well microsoft's got at least five years away how long's the xbox one be around microsoft's got a year's head start in consolidating their hardware yes correct um, yeah and, and but this is this is where uh everybody like i said commentating talking about it, writing about it and and all the customers are still stuck in the old mindset where are oh, you an xbox and uh, originally a, a Sega and a nintendo console come out near each other and then an xbox and a playstation come out near each other and and so th- this idea that oh well they're competing with each other well they're not anymore because every time microsoft releases a console it's like upgrading your pc or your old games are going to run a bit better and faster and they are doing that they're adding like ray tracing and stuff to to older games um so you're not it's not really a a the old concept of I've got a new console. I'm going to need new games. I'm going to need launch games. Well, yeah, you like them, and you'd like to have a Halo Infinite on launch mm. to do it. But ultimately, it's a zero risk purchase to get mm. all your old stuff running. You don't have to rebuy anything at all, which you will. I can tell you what: Sony is not going to give you all your old PlayStation games for free, right? It's yeah. not going to happen. Um, it's not. So you're going to that if they have backward compatibility, you're and they've already said they're going to be running on 
on potentially cloud service, which is going to be yeah. a disaster. But that's another story. Um, but that means they're not just going to let you run it. You're going to have to buy yeah, it. So, yeah, you're going to, yeah. so yeah, we'll, we'll run PS2 games, but you're going to have to pay. It might only be $10, $15 each. But, but that, that's what they already do on PS4 as it speaks. So, yeah. So. yeah so, but that's not, I mean, that's so backward compatibility, but it's not the same as what Microsoft's doing. Microsoft's saying, if you have this game, you bought a game, it's yours yep. forever. And and that's what happens on PC. If you've got your Steam library, generally, I know there are yeah, exceptions yeah. to this, but generally the idea is if, if I've got my Steam library, every time I upgrade my PC, it runs. And it is a good chance it runs at a higher resolution and faster. And guess what? The Xbox Series X will run them at 4K, uh, you know, up to 120 frames a second. So I'm getting effect effectively as like I'm upgrading my PC, but it's called Xbox. I'm not that, losing any. I'm not losing anything to change generation, and that that is that mindset. That, again, it goes back to the PS3 mindset. Is everyone I knew kept their PS3 because they saw how difficult it was. Like, there's so many games on the PS3 that I'm like, I'd love to play. I'd love to play Metal Gear Solid 4 again. I don't want to break out my PS3. I don't have to go through all the bullshit to deal with it. I'd love to play Tokyo Jungle again. I'm not going to break out my PS3. This now allows you to basically go, cool, I'm going to trade in my <clears> Xbox and the deal, you know, the all access or whatever it is in Australia is run through Telstra, which again is an interesting choice because that's not a retailer. Do you know what I mean? So they don't have to yeah. feel bad about you know, offering a discless product. Um, is it's like, cool, I can just trade in my Xbox. All my games will work. You know what I mean? Like they'll just work. No qualms, no concerns. Um, I'm going to sell, like I can buy, I can re-download all my games, play them, blah, 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 blah. Bob's your uncle, and then when I want to play like the next gen games that come out, there's going to be ready to go. The Steam comparison is a very good one, I think, is it's like cool. Like I have all these Steam games I bought. I've just upgraded my PC. As a general rule, they're going to work unless there's some weird compatibility issue with like Nvidia over AMD. And again, that's what you're avoiding when you buy Xbox. It's like cool. It's still an AMD drivetrain. You know what I mean? Like a, a, a like a chip on um, a system on chip. And so it's like cool like it's still inside that same kind of ecosystem so it's easy to, to to backwards and forwards data because you don't have to go between these kind of uh obtuse technologies to do so um and so yeah so i don't know i agree with you i think that you know if anything sony didn't get the memo that generations are dead um and they've just doubled down on it so yeah you know, it was there was a great article i read you know gamesindustry.biz occasionally puts out some real good articles and one of the articles yeah, they put they, out was yeah yeah one of the articles I put out was discussing how um, this generation is the first time we've seen the big three players all occupy a different space. Like, yeah. like um, Sony is going for, we are the next gen glam <clears throat> premium experience. And that's another reason I still think they'll sell it for expensive because they're pushing that as it is the, the flagship. They're using right? that. They're using expensive language, which is why yes. I reckon it's going to be 900 potentially more. Uh, they're, Correct. They're, they're talking, yeah. they're talking like it's a premium product and there's yep. only run, one reason I'll do that. And that's because they plan to price it. Well. But anyway, keep going. Uh, I just You're think absolutely expensive right. ads. You're absolutely yeah. right. And, and so they, like, I just got sent their new ad campaign. It's like the edge and it's like, what is it? Um, or all of us are allowed to play or something like that is their, their slogan. No, and I'm like, are you guys <laughs> fucking for real? No, like, get off Twitter, dickheads. Yeah, let me, let me have a look. Yeah. Um, uh, oh, yeah. So uh, girls are allowed to play on the PlayStation now. Oh, that's great. Yeah, <laughs> I know, right? It's, it's very old fashioned. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I flagged. Oh, I just I can't I can't say it quickly. But yeah, it was. Uh, uh, oh yeah, there we go. Yeah, gamers go beyond the edge. So yeah, the, uh, play has no limits. Um, the spot brings up the idea of play has no limits to life through an evocative visual metaphor, with gamers taking us on an adventure they never believed dreamed were possible. Shut the fuck up. Show us some goddamn video games. Like no yeah, one gives a shit a about your your fucking penis thumb, fucking third place bullshit. No one fucking cares. Oh my can I, lord. Can I out that in the past Sony has done some outrageously racist ads. Oh, <laughs> so, mate, <laughs> Sony, okay, comment below. You're gonna get you get upset, yeah. but they have. Let's not. There, there was that one where it had the uh, the white Vita grabbing the black Vita. They were they were like people and grabbing by the throat, and it was just outrageous. Yeah. And and it was pretty obvious what Sony was doing. They were pretty. <laughs> and now that now they're doing that, good on them. But 
they're, they're, they're typical bullshit. That's what they do. People yeah. lap it up. They're, they're, they're playing to their crowd. Their crowd will love it. Uh, it's going to be an overpriced piece of garbage, but hey, <laughs> there we go. So, yeah. So I, I, I think I think that really goes to the – so that's the premium. I mean, that's the experience low. they're trying to sell. Yeah, yeah. That's the experience <laughs> they're trying to sell. Then you have Xbox who are more interested in you maintaining their ecosystem. They realize that the thing that Steam does well is maintaining people in their ecosystem. People won't go to Epic Game Store unless Epic Games are literally giving away – brilliant indie games they won't they won't go near it because there's no incentive to go to epic store yeah but it's even not when they do here. they ninja it they'll go as yeah. long as they'll go to play the free game and then come back straight away yeah i mean exactly no, no, yeah nobody goes to epic games store by choice so nobody stays there yeah, by choice absolutely it's, it's, not. it's a joke <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, yeah. and, and, no, no, you're right. You're right. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. And I mean, I, I find it funny that that's that's who Sony have crawled into bed with. Do you know what I mean? Like, if you want to make that point, and I, I think that's where uh, we're headed. The same yeah. market. That's what that yeah. is. They're, they're the same yeah. market. Big play stuff we see. But anyway, keep going. Yeah. And so yeah, yeah. Um, and so um, and then uh, yeah. So Microsoft are going for the ecosystem. They want you to buy Game Pass. They're, 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 they'll take the hit early on for things. But if they know that once once you've locked into that that subscription and it costs you $150 a year they would have looked at it and gone in previous generations we would be lucky to sell two exclusives a year and that's you know, $100 USD that we're selling. Our attach rate is low. So how about instead of that, we offer all these experiences under that banner, right? O- offer our partners a chance to sell DLC. Offer our partners a chance to sell this. Sell the base game in as XYZ. Like, you know, it's, it's like, it, it may sound cynical, but like, oh, I don't get the DLC with Witcher. It's like, yeah, but you get The Witcher for free. So you're like 40 to 60 hours of one of the best RPGs of the last 10 years for free. And then if you want to buy the DLC, wait till it goes on special for, for 15 bucks and buy it. You know what I mean? Like, there, there's yeah. so many opportunities. Yeah, like, yeah, that's what they want. They want you in that ecosystem because you're unlikely to cancel it once you're in. You know what I mean? And if you buy it through the All Access for that two-year period that you're paying it off, you get <laughs> um, Game Pass included in that. You get a code for two years of Game Pass, right? So it's like, cool. So they've got you in the ecosystem. Now, that's what they're building towards. They're building towards... Yeah, I, I would say the difference is that Sony are building towards a big 2020 and Microsoft are building towards a big 2025. It's just going to see if they can... I guess they've, they've got the resources to, to weather that particular storm, but it feels like for the first time in a while, Microsoft have a, conducive, a cohesive plan Sorry, um, to, to give you an idea of where they're actually headed with their promotions. And I, I haven't said that about them in a long time. Um, and yeah. then Nintendo, we're just doing Nintendo things. Like, they're just doing handheld things. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, we're, we're, we're making... Yeah. And and so, every market's different, and that's why you're seeing Microsoft. They're like, hey, we'd love to have Cuphead on Microsoft Store. What about it? And I reckon for that one, instead of... Sorry, vice versa. Like, on the yeah. Switch Store and, yeah, and Switch, having... Yeah access to rare properties and, and all that kind of, like, you know, vice versa. Yeah. I'm sure it was a, a kind of a, hey, we, you know, we'd love to have published on there. And why did Nintendo care? Like, Nintendo don't compete with Microsoft. People don't play Mario for the same reason they play Halo. Um, so Microsoft don't care and Nintendo don't care. It's, it's a boon for them. The worst thing that could happen to Sony is the combining of those two worlds. And I think that that is the thing that they need to be mindful of. And we've seen recently EA, I don't know if you're aware, you now get EA Play as part of your yeah, I was about Xbox to say that. Yeah. Game Pass sub. Yeah. So you'll get Which, the, the Sims 4 for free and you can pay $710 worth of DLC. <laughs> for the DLC. Hey, I, I, I bought the train Sims. I can't pick on anyone for that shit, hey. Um, Choo-choo. The, the other one as well is like, we, we still maintain, well, one of the big rumors that we have gone around thing is that we still maintain that Sega has a deal going with Microsoft. And I still think that's something that's going to come out soon, that all the Yakuza mm. games will appear on Game Pass for free and yeah. that um, going forward. Like, I, I still feel like TGS is going to offer some interesting things for Microsoft. I, I, I just, it's just a feeling in my bones because, like, you know, N- Nintendo, I, I don't know, I guess the one other news story that's worth bringing up is Nintendo are telling their publishers, they're their partners, to be ready to have their games upscalable to 4K. I don't know if you saw that one. Um, uh, well, yeah, you go with that. Let's. Uh, we talked a lot about Sony and Microsoft. Yeah. Let's go. Let's go with a bit of Nintendo stuff, and I'll save it big for later. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. But, so let's go. With some, there are a few Nintendo stories, so let's go with that one. So there was a patent I also saw for independent uh, Joy Cons, which didn't yes. slide on to a thing. So go with what you know, what you can say. 
I remember because uh, doesn't it cost you eighty thousand dollars if you say the wrong thing? No, no, I, I didn't. I didn't sign the contract. Um, <laughs> so let's go. Yeah, no, I still haven't signed it. So, so number one, um, the the first one is they, um, yeah. So they, they, there's rumors that there's a, a switch 4K um, that they're going to announce, or we're going to announce this year in COVID. This is the problem. Being, you know, I'm my rumor mill is normally pretty good. I've got a pretty good ear for what to take seriously and what not to take seriously, and I just like. Because of COVID, everything is like cactus. Like, good luck trying to plot a course at the moment. Um, but there, there's definitely rumours that there's going to be a 4K um, switch for next year, like a, a HD switch for next year, the Switch Pro, if you will. Um, there's more mm-hmm. and more rumours coming out that that's going to be a thing. Um, you know, there, there's rumours, like you say, for the, the independent Joy-Cons and stuff like that. The problem with that is, of course, that Joy-Cons still have Joy-Con drift. So, you know, even now my gray, my old gray one has Joy-Con drift um, on my second hand, like on my right hand, not my le- left hand. Um, and so every, oh, that's out of the, what, 10 Joy-Cons I have? That's three. Three out of 10 Joy-Cons yeah, have Joy-Con I'm a, drift. I'm on my third, I'm on my third set, but I've got a teenage boy here. And I don't know, you, you can tell when you got a teenage boy at home when, you, when your son reaches uh, puberty because suddenly all the taps in the house, you can't turn back on again. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> Then, yeah. And the Guess Joy-Cons yeah. have been direct. <laughs> so. it's, it's, it's a little bit, yeah, um, Rocky Bullock. Guess I don't know my own strengths. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. Uh, it's yeah. actually quite It's quite surprising. It's, it's quite amazing to watch. But um, yeah. Yeah, I'm on my third set of uh, Joy-Cons, and, and the other ones are just cactus. Just uh, They yeah. just go off in white, well, random. Both of them, on one set, both of them just go random directions. I try playing Spyro, and it just spins around the whole time. It's just unplayable. Yeah, so. yeah, and so so that, 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 that is probably one of the big hardware deficiencies that they need to sort out kind of full stop. Um, and then, obviously, they had the Mario announcement recently. You know, it's funny. Their 35th anniversary for Mario and Sonic's anniversary is later in the year for 30th. Yeah. Um, uh, it'll be interesting to see what they do, but they obviously released, uh, they obviously announced the the triple pack. For the, the One of the worst kept secrets I've had is the three triple pack Mario three games. All, so, three D All Stars. Yeah, uh, three D All Stars, yeah. Well, one one game I've never played, one game I've tried to play a few times, and, I, and, and another game, which is Mario Galaxy, that I reckon is one of the best games ever made. Just so incredibly imaginative, even for Nintendo. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm really, really, really looking forward to that. But anyway, I sidetracked what you're saying. No, 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 you're right. No, no, no. Look, I mean, to me, it's always that thing of like, yeah, Mario Sunshine, Mario Galaxy. I'm always happy to play Mario Galaxy Two. Uh, is also another fantastic game. Um, but yeah, it'll so come as DLC, won't it? The the the, big, the biggest annoyance about the whole thing is, as you saw, it's so they've got that, and then they've got Mario 35, which is like a competitive battle royale game for Mario. Yeah, interesting. And yeah. But they they come off the store in like thirty first of March. They come off the store at the uh, end of the Japanese financial year. That's that's a manufactured shortage. That, okay, okay, what, what's that, the word? That's actually it, a term. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, artificial um, scarcity. Uh, scarcity. Yeah, yeah. yeah art, artificial scarcity. Yeah, there's they, no way they'll do that. <laughs> digital no artificial scarcity. Not 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 physical artificial scarcity. Digital artificial scarcity. Yeah, they're just but making anyone, sure everyone yeah. gets on early. And yeah. So there's no way they'll remove it from the store. Uh, what, they'll what extend they'll do, it indefinitely. They'll remove anyway. the pack and then they'll sell them individually for 30 to 40 bucks each is what they'll do. So the 3D so, All-Stars is going to be removed as well, is it? Yeah, 3D All-Stars is going to be removed as well, I'm reasonably okay. certain. Because so. my, my guess would have been more along the lines of that's going to be like a uh, Master Chief collection and they're going to yeah. add Mario Galaxy 2 as DLC. I, that's yeah, where I can see way. going. Uh, yeah, well, I won't hold my breath though because I just yeah. I think the the threat to remove it it's not a threat, but you know what I mean is to get the interest early and it'll work. But <laughs> so, um, but I can't see him. I can't see him removing it. it yeah, I like, like yeah. again. I, I think it'll be they'll remove the pack and then it'll be, um, it'll be uh, like um. What's what I'm thinking of? Uh, yeah, um, uh, it'll it'll be uh, then separated out of the pack into the individual <clears throat> games. But, okay, um, well, yeah, let's, so, yeah. Well, sorry to interrupt, but there is some news, and this is something that's mm. only recent. That's this Diviver ran. Um, Steve being one of the best, actually, Australian uh, video game journals, I believe. But uh, the, the Mario 3D All Stars all run off emulators. Yes, that, that, I know that one. Yep. Now that suggests if if they are and if if what you say is true and uh, they come as a pack of the say you're effectively getting a pack of three emulators right a yeah. GameCube emulator a, a Nintendo sixty four emulator yeah. although I think they're the same one and and one that does uh, no Wii no, no you're thinking you're, you're thinking Wii and GameCube are the same 
Oh, sorry, my mistake. Uh, yes, but so you get, so you effectively, if that's the case, and it's not what I thought, well, maybe be wrong on that one, then we could be seeing uh, floodgates open of those games that all run on those emulators. So maybe not a virtual console, but you might see a hell of a lot of Wii games find its way under the Switch, for example, yeah. uh, soon after this. Yeah, I, I, I don't think that's a bad idea. And I mean, realistically, it's like even the, the ROMs that were on um, the <clears throat> NES Mini were like countersigned ROMs that someone had taken off the internet. They just like played with kind of thing. And it's like, yeah, but what are you <laughs> going to do? Sue them? Sue them for taking back their own thing? You know what I mean? Like you can't... <laughs> what leg- but if somebody else does that, they'd see yeah. their pants off. Yeah. Oh, corporation gets stuff. Anyway, stupid yeah. capitalism. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, and so, and yeah, like, and, and so it's, yeah. Um, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's super funny. Um, and then, yeah, then of course, like on top of that, um, yeah, like like you mentioned, like you know, yeah, we we bring up piracy before and and how good PS3 emulation is, and good old Geo Hots had to spend a bit of time in jail for that one, and you know what I mean? Like it was it was a it was a joke all the the situation there, and then like lo and behold, I mean, I, I, again, you got to give Microsoft that at least they've just lent into it and embraced it. You know what I mean? They just said let's just make it available for people. It's the the Netflix argument of let's just make it for people to watch, and then they won't download it. And that's the thing. Like we've gone back to. We were solely an anti-piracy house, except for the stuff that we couldn't get. But then now, three or four different services, you know, to get everything that you want to watch. And then, you know, if you want to watch Mulan, Lamal, um, then yeah, you um, <laughs> don't, don't. Yeah, just yeah. Watch the cartoon. Uh, watch the cartoon. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, like, like, like that, like that, like the critique I linked from the, the thing from the the Chinese guy was really good and, and discussed a lot of the reasons that it that it sucked. Um, yeah, it sounded fair to me. I'm not Chinese, yeah. but uh, I know I know a I know a movie that's um, yeah, a cynical marketing ploy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> And so, um, and so, yeah, like you know, so then you, then you start to talk that, and then it's like, oh, Hulu's going to release here soon, and HBO's going to release here soon. It's like, cool. I'll just go back to the Russian sites. Thanks a lot for your time. Like, it, it's been nice, uh, and I'm glad that you, like, you know, you, you you've done this. But yeah, no, no, thank you. I'm out. Like, and yeah, I, I like, I, I think that that's where Microsoft have, have come in and been a little bit smart about it, where they're just like, well, if we don't do this, they're going to find a way to to do it, and. Yeah, I don't know. Um, yeah, why would you honestly? Why would you bother? Why would you bother risking having your Xbox Live account wrecked mm, and, yeah. and hacking when you could just pay fifteen bucks a month, if they're on the full price, you know, after your one dollar yeah. intro offer, and just play? Because I know my Sunday's friends there, they'll just go, oh, well, let's play try this game. They'll spend an afternoon playing the game, and then they go, oh shit, and they'll move on to yeah, something yeah, else. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. just like, and, and as a parent, it's it's fantastic. I'm only paying fifty, but it's like Spotify with my daughter because she's she's. It got to the stage where she just want to listen to music all day, and yeah, yeah. I didn't have to buy in the old days. You have to go buy the CDs. If you one song you like, you go out and you buy a CD with twenty songs on it, and you go, "Geez, nineteen of them were garbage." <laughs> you got one, <laughs> and uh, nowadays you just get Spotify, and here you go, it's twelve bucks a month. Listen but- as much as you want. I don't care. That's probably the one last one we, we, we'll bring up before we hit our forty-minute deadline. Is um, uh, oh, yeah. face, Facebook now have a deal uh, with um, the music industry for with Sony, Universal, and Warner to access their song libraries. Um, so basically, if you've got any of those songs in your Facebook content, they'll find a way to pay them for it. Um, much, much like Rupert wants for his newspaper stuff. Yeah, except that you know people actually want to listen to music. Um, <laughs> Uh, so yeah, um, yeah. All right. Uh, so if we're up to, we are trying to keep. In case anyone listening wondered what Jace was doing there, we are trying to keep our podcast from going for yeah you know, one and a half, two hours because we ramble. Which we've a been bit. known to do, uh, which we've been known to do. Yeah. Last one, last one, I got covered very excellently. I would direct people towards the. Um, I was going to talk about Epic, but Epic and Apple, but it got covered very excellently on the. Uh, proper show podcast i can't remember mm. which one it was it was with you and don and yep. uh, meg, I can't remember. meg i'm pretty sure meg? okay yeah sorry apologies all, to all, 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 all but, girls look the same it's fine uh, yeah so yes yeah. <laughs> uh views expressed do not matter anyway, yeah. so, so um so uh it was covered very excellently there basically uh, tim sweeney the trump of video games has run his mouth off again uh and uh go listen to the the main show podcast because they said pretty much what i was going to say um on this yeah. on this one um yeah, and, we, and you we, know, we, you know, you know my opinion of Sweeney, but yes, we, yeah, we, we got a minute or two, but like, yeah, so so basically, 
yeah, uh, they, they they came at Apple and said, we, we're going to try and put a side portal into Thing, which will then allow, um, you know, uh, uh, you to buy a V-Bucks without having to pay the Apple tax on top of it so that um, Fortnite then don't have to pay the extra. Uh, so that Epic don't have to pay the extra. Uh, Apple said, no, nah, that's in contravention to our terms of accessing our market. They then, he sent that fucking letter to them, like, do it all with, like, he, here are my list of demands. And they were like, okay, go fuck yourself. Yeah, and a picture um, of his dick on that as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, I know. That, was, that was him swinging. He was him swinging was, for sure. Dick uh, waving wanker, but anyway. Yeah. And then, 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 then they pretended there was this grassroots movement. And then they had their anti-Apple 1984 video ready to go. Like, they released it within a day of that. And then, um, yeah, so um, they took it to court. And then the, the, the follow-up that we didn't get a chance to discuss on the thing was that um, – uh, cause Apple was at the point where they were like, well, we now don't want you to have a- anything that's made using the, um, unreal engine. We're going to remove from our store because you're that was suing gonna us happen. and, yeah. and they've got, Oh, we don't want that. It's like, well, and so they got told by the judge that they can't do that because it's not in the confines of this, this finding because the marketplace doesn't necessarily like you approve the app on the basis that the thing works and that it follows your terms. You can't then say it's using an engine that's been created to do it. You can't just cancel support for uh, people to put uh, updates out through unreal. You can't do that. So, but what you can do is you don't have to give Fortnite back their place in the thing until all this hearing is over. So you can't currently buy V bucks through, Apple and then they released yeah. like some half assed measure to to try and meet in the middle on it. Um, and even Microsoft have just said, Look, oh, yeah, so basically you can access xCloud and the Stadia service through your iPhone, but you have to download each individual game as an individual app, uh, as opposed to having a portal that covers yeah, no, them all. And they, were, and they would still, legit. yeah, they would still let you buy, <clears throat> like they said, like if you want to buy subscriptions through that, you can buy it through the thing, but you have to have them as individual apps. And then Microsoft just came out straight away and said, it's like, if it's not a, a if it's not a, a holistic, seamless experience, we're not interested. Thank you anyway. Okay. There's a big difference between Microsoft and Epic. And, and one yeah. is now, now, now what Microsoft wants to do is different to what Epic wants to do. Now, Microsoft wants to stream games. And, and the reason Apple doesn't like that is because, they make the same reason Apple killed Adobe and people yeah. overlook this. The only reason Flash doesn't exist anymore is because on the iPad was popular and Apple wanted you to download apps instead of yeah. like Flash games on the web. But it's as simple as that. Nothing more than that. And, and I'm not going to say that there's any good guys or bad guys in this. Uh, it's just especially not, especially not Adobe. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Um, in all of this, there's only bad guys and worse guys when you talk at this level. But, but that's different to what Epic wants to make, wants to open the door to have other app stores on Apple. Now, people might say, that's okay, whatever. Let's, I mean, you used to have Cydia to, to run the, the, the homebrew stuff. But, but what there was, an, there was a brief moment in time before Apple made everybody do in-app purchases through the app store. And what was starting to happen was everybody was having their own credit card processing and therefore their own credit card storage and everything in their apps and was starting to get really, really like fraud, fraudulent, fraud, fraud everywhere. Effectively, yeah. basically every every app that came out of you know Ukraine or Russia or North Korea was effectively just collecting credit card information and just and, and it was and, and Apple saw Apple saw what was happening. This, the complaints were starting to happen, and so they said, no, from now on you have to do all purchases through our app store. And yeah. now Apple takes thirty percent. People complain. They are providing infrastructure. And all that, so I don't think it's you know you could argue it's. it's well, you, you kind of knew you knew the deal walking in, you know what I mean? Like yeah, you, access yeah, to yeah they didn't spring then. it on any. But 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 what happens now if Epic wins this? Now Epic wants to put an app store on, right? And Epic can get stuff because I don't think it needs another app store personally, and I don't think Epic offers anything of any value, including Fortnite. Comment below if you love Fortnite. I don't care. But the um everyone did. Now problem is then suddenly the next uh there there was also a point where there was eleven. Commonwealth NetBank apps on the Android store, and only one was by Commonwealth Bank. And you're going to see stuff like that. So you're going to see payment processing being done through through apps all over the store, and it's going to be a mess. And people are going to start losing money. And who are they going to complain to? They're not going to complain to the Russian little hackers who wrote that app. It won't happen. They're going yeah. to complain to Apple, and Apple's going to get the class actions and everything. And this is this is where I think what Epic wants to do is opening a massive can of worms. And and I don't I hope they're not successful. Um, now yeah. I got no love for Apple. I think, uh, I, and, and yeah, I'm not commenting on thirty percent. But I think 
unless there's a unless there's a way if Epic get their own app store and nobody else does, you know that everyone else is going to say, how come they got an app store? We want one too. So then you're going to find EA is going to want an app store, Ubisoft will want an app store, and then there'll be hard tons. And, and again, it's going to get to the point where everybody wants, everybody's doing credit card transactions through their apps. And it's dangerous, and it's going to end up in a, in a, in a platform that is for normies and for people that aren't really educated about security. It's even more dangerous, and I, I really think what Epic's doing here is a is a bad thing, and it's it, it really is playing with fire. Yeah. So like, 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 I always say, like the one thing I will give Epic is the fact they only take twelve percent, I think, out of um, everyone's. Uh, when, when you buy a game off Epic Store, you get twelve percent taken out. Oh, I genuinely think that's good on like good on them. Um, that's I great. Think it's the exchange rate into China, so ten cent and all that. Don't you know, they, yeah, they still make a lot of money. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. And and also also add on that um you know like thirty percent. I think is too high, but at the same time. It's the nature of doing business, and the only way that you're going to be able to, to do that is to start a rival platform. And then they, then you get the conversation about these monopolies and stuff, and that's fine. There is a relevant conversation there. But the one who doesn't get to bring that up and complain about it is Tim fucking Sweeney. You know what I mean? He's not the one who gets to then go, I want to sell your children more fake currency, so therefore you have to give me access. Like, shut the hell up, Tim. Like, just... Yep. Yeah. yeah. He's, uh, told, told he's, uh, and, you know, yeah, who else can't complain? Yeah, you know who else can get stuff? Microsoft. They had yeah. their own platform. They they abandoned it. Like, you know what would be a killer app for Windows Phone right now? XCloud. You know what? Yeah. Microsoft, calm the hell down. Oh, I just, oh, <laughs> you had your chance. I would, you yeah. had a decision to be relied on, on Apple and Google, right? That was your choice. You had a phone. You had a functioning operating system. It was better than the others. It was really good, but you canned it, right? So don't go complaining and saying, oh, no, they won't lose on our app store. If only we had another place. You did. Uh, yeah. So no, they, 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 there's there's only there's no good guy and bad guy in these. There's only bad guys and worse guys. That was that was that was one that um that Rags brought up because Rags was Rags was the biggest um Microsoft um win, like Windows Phone stand there was. Like him and you were the two most prolific, and even I had a Windows Phone. <laughs> Steve, I was a big Windows stand as well. Yeah, um, and I I, 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 had yep. a, I had a Surface RT yeah, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, yep. and um like I don't know. I I think genuinely it did die before its time. But yeah, it, it's it's it Microsoft not, really it killed it. They murdered it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, die. exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, well, it still died. It just got murdered to die. Like, it, it was murdered to death. But it no, I, fight. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 hundred percent agree. I, I think, I think it's, it's, it's unfair for Microsoft to say that. And, um, I think that, um, you know, it, and if, it, if it, you get another way to publish their games as well, oh, yeah. you know, oh, these poor bastards. <laughs> if, 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 if Tim Sweeney wants to to fleece kids on the iPhone, then maybe he should have thought of that before he started making a game that targets specifically children on iPhone. That is borderline like, gambling, but that's yeah. another story. We've yeah, over exactly. Time, but yeah. <laughs> well, 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 and truly over time, so you should probably wrap up. So. All right, well, let's go. I, I got I got angry. So uh, anyway, um, cool. Well, anyway, uh, that's good. That's uh, so yeah, uh, we're done. Go to newgameplus.tv for all that stuff. Listen to the sh- proper show podcast because there's going to be more. Except that um, in the show one, uh, I'm I'm too lazy to do this, but uh, I know Cringy cut your rant short. <laughs> yes, yeah, he does for for the for the for the TV version and for the podcast version he does i mean it's yep. a problem yeah it's, it's especially when we've got the new blood on like i have to try and encourage the new blood to speak i'm like no I'm, I'm not cutting you off i just get excited about stuff so i always try and like be mindful of it but when it's don and cart and the usual crew it's like nah you can fight for your dinner boys like yeah um <laughs> uh, get, get on that get on that anyone who's listening the, the proper show podcast it's great cringe is running it he's a star he really recorded live on thursday as well so we're live on twitch yep. thursday and uh, and the, in fact, the next one, considering the record time, is going to have info on the Sony pricing, which this yes. podcast doesn't. So go listen to it now. And see how wrong we were. Yeah. Well, yeah, uh, happy to be wrong, but let's see how it goes. We we aren't doing too bad. Um, yeah. so the, the um so newgameplus.tv, uh, newgameplus.tv on almost everything, Twitch, uh, YouTube, all that sort of stuff. Twitter, follow us. Uh, thanks, Jason, and uh, we'll be back next week, maybe a bit of time, but who knows? This podcast, you listen to it whenever you want. So we'll see you then. <laughs>